girls, get ready for your matches. And you, headhunter, don't try breaking any limbs today or it'll cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> You sound just like a record. Yeah. Yeah, a broken one. Hey. Who are you? I'm Melanie Trouble Nixon, MTV. And I came here to watch Matilda the Hun put the beat on Mountain Fiji. It's gonna be music to my ears. So you're a singer? Yeah, I dig this. I'm a wrestling hound dog. Scratching out your eyes. Ow! My hands are unsinkable. Sure, nobody could drown you out. Hey, you! the Riviera Hotel in the entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas, Nevada. The independent network and winning productions present the fun and action-packed show, Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Card today, fans. Amy, the farmer's daughter, squares off against the terrorist, Palestina. The California doll battles Mana, the headhunter. In a special handicap match, Mountain Fiji and Little Fiji take on Attaché and Hollywood and Vine. And in the main event, the all-American Susie Spirit and Americana lock up with the heavy metal sisters, Chainsaw and Spike. We'll be right back with all the action. Hello, Aunt Kitty. I want to thank you for the fruitcake you baked me. Is it good? It's perfect. The best doorstop I've ever had. <laughs> Hello? Hello? contrast between the charming country girl and the machete-wielding terrorist. What do you have there, Amy? I brought some flowers for you because you're so nice. Aren't you sweet? You brought these flowers for me? 
just for you because I think you're such a nice man. Thank you very much. Flowers from Amy, the farmer's daughter. I, I just have one request, Mr. McLean. I, I was wondering if you could make her keep that, that machete out of the ring. The machete? You mean that long knife that she has? It, it reminds me, it reminds me of some of my pa used to butcher the hogs with, and I don't like it. Palestina, you will have to keep referee. You will have to make sure Palestina keeps the machete out from ringside. Thank you, Mr. McClain. Palestina. Palestina, keep that. before the bell is characteristic of this terrorist tactics. Slamming Amy into the turnbuckles from one corner to the other, she quickly establishes control, dominating the farm girl. Oh, she is trying to dispose of Amy as readily as she did those flowers. Motormouth Mike Morgan, the move and maneuver man, you won't calling all the shots. And Amy's already taken quite a few. Palestina's got a handful of hair. And mares her over. She's really been yanking away at the country girl's hair. Marie tries to break up this hair pulling match and finally succeeds. And a big knee drop. Oh, right to Amy's midsection. That must have hurt the little country girl. And now she's choking her. Again with a choking. There is nothing to which this terrorist will not stoop. She has really been brutalizing Amy with no letter. She's enraged over being forced to surrender her machete, and she's been chopping her opponent down as a result. Palestina yells at ring announcer David McClain. She's allowing herself to be distracted by trading invective with him and the fans, and Amy turns the tables on her foe, accusing Amy of her own hair-pulling tactics. The terrorist is hurled across the ring and taken down with a leg dive. Amy keeps a tight grip on the terrorist. Here, Amy's superior leg strength comes into play. Palestina trying to grab the ropes to break it. Amy pulls her away, though. She can't get away with that. And now Amy is trying to bend her in here. Oh, I am somewhat shocked at Amy resorting to hair pulling. She must have been driven beyond her normal control by the terrorist's vicious sneak attack. Amy has slammed that desert rat nearly through the canvas. Might rearrange some of her dental work. Another handful of hair, and she slams it down again. The country girl is really taking it to this Middle Eastern sand flea. Catches her off the ropes, and a tremendous body slam. Amy is really going to town, and she knows it. Down with a terrorist again. <laughs> Uh-oh, Palestina clearly has revenge in mind. Calling to a heathen gods. She 
She goes into a frenzied attack. She nails Amy in the stomach and takes her into a punishing wrist lock. The terrorist keeps the wrist tight and pounds away on the farm girl. There we go. Another crushing blow to the back. Oh, and to the arm. Oh! It's as if she's trying to chop that arm off. Oh, and she takes her down. This match is certainly no roll in the hay for Amy. Palestina pounds on her stomach. Pounding, pounding away at the girl's tender midriff. Trying to bite there, it's hard to tell. Palestina going for the pin. Almost has it up, but the scuffling girl's leg strength throws her off. And alley a perfect monkey toss. Amy grabs a handful of hair. And quickly stops when requested by the referee, unlike the terrorist. And she throws the terrorist into the ropes. And, well! What a backdrop! The farmer's daughter challenges us to get up and fight instead of squirming, scratching, and clawing on the canvas like some North African rodent. Now Palestina is flopping about the ring back and forth like some sort of fish out of water. Both fighters are grappling on their feet now, struggling toe to toe. Palestina fakes Amy out with a vicious kick to the midsection. Oh, a hard smash to the stomach. Palestina is really punishing Amy's midsection. Oh, and another to the back. And now the terrorist is biting, trying to get a piece of Amy's hide. She smiles wickedly, loving the taste of flesh between her teeth. More like fangs in this case. Oh, she slams the farmer's daughter down. She grabs a leg. Oh, oh. And almost splits her in two. Is this a pin? Palestina victorious. But apparently exhausted. Palestina. Oh, look at that. Not content with winning the match, Palestina attacks ring announcer David McLean. He smashed him in the midsection and he's him right out of the ring. You know, terrorism is unrelenting, and we must be ever vigilant in our opposition to it, as clearly illustrated here. Look at this. She's a one-woman riot squad. She's choking Amy with the microphone cord. The ref tries to break it up, albeit unsuccessfully. David McLean tries to break it up. He's got it down. No, no, she has him down. And McLean is taking another beating. She even turns on the ref. In attempting to call a halt to this travesty, both McLean and the ref are taking terrible punishment. Any guys out there who think these glow girls aren't so tough just because they're women can check out the drubbing Palestina is giving two men at once. The terrorist is trying to strangle Amy with that mic cord. The farmer's daughter is turning blue. The referee is down, perhaps with a bitten ear. Oh, Palestine has McLean off again. Flinging him out of the ring entirely. The referee is down. 
Amy's on her feet. The referee trying to restore some order. Amy leaves the ring. And look, Tina Ferrari jumps into the ring. And she is pounding the terrorist for all she's worth. Yes. The Globe champion has seen enough and is teaching Palestina a lesson and a good thing, too. The terrorist's next move might have been to attack the audience with, with some sort of automatic weapon. Tina dumps her right out of the ring and kicks her for good measure. Directing her to leave the arena, the terrorist counterattacks. But Tina flips her over the onto the concrete floor. Oh, it looks like Palestina's security. knee is injured. It couldn't happen to a sweeter person. And Kitty steps in to prevent her girl from Separate suffering further damage. Girls. And now security has separated them and is escorting the terrorist out. When the bloodlust is on this terrorist, it takes more than the rules of the game to slow her down. That's Stop right, Tina Ferrari has shown her. Come out and have a match with her. Any day. Shown her that Let's right as the true Tina might. Ferrari. Tina Ferrari. We'll be back in a moment with more of Glow. Hey, Doc. How'd you figure on what to specialize in? Well, Angel, I knew proctology was the answer to all my problems. You're kidding! No, it was the light at the end of the tunnel for me. <laughs> Americana's evil is equal to this country's economy. Yeah. Overinflated. <laughs> the singles match. First from Malibu, California, the California Dog. Hey, little surf cats, stay in school. Just like the dog, and that's real cool. And like the good girls, be honest and fair, and you'll be a winner everywhere. <laughs> Her opponent today from the South Pacific Islands, managed by Aunt Kitty, Mana the Head Hunter. She was swinging on a jungle vine and just misses the California doll with that spear. They lock up. Oh, and she takes the headhunter over in a cradle. The doll sets her up and takes her down again. The doll is still smarting from that last match and wants a little payback. She works her into a headlock. And Mana throws her into a corner. She charges, but the doll eats out of the way. Mana has smashed her own head on the turnbuckle. Oh, that Malibu punch sends Mana flying. The doll is really ready for any of Mana's tricks. But now the headhunter takes the upper hand. She's quick, and that's how she captures her prey. Some wrestlers talk constantly, taunting and badgering their opponents. Mana, however, has nothing but bestial grunts, growls, and snarls. A truly vicious creature, constantly on the offensive. Going through the throat. She is toying with a California doll. Trying to twist her head off, grabbing it by the head, twisting. She is really giving those neck muscles a workout today. Now she's biting her neck. Mana may have a touch of cannibal in here. The doll manages to flip the head on her over. But Mana bulls her into a corner. The head on her relies on her brute strength to overpower her opponents. She's after the neck again. Mana may be trying to add the doll's head to a collection. She gets a warning from the ref. I'm surprised this animal even understands human speech. Power slam. 
Mana gets ready for the kill. She goes for the splash. Oh, and the doll blocks it with the legs. Still gasping for breath from the constant choking, the girl from Malibu climbs up on the turnbuckle. And springs off with a powerful kick to the head on his chest. That seems to have taken the wind out of Mana's sail. The doll has it down. And now is riding her like a surfboard. She slams Mana's head to the mat, showing her how to hunt canvas instead of heads. Mana pushes her off, both struggle to the feet. And Mana strikes again. Mana flips the doll to the mat, trying to turn that happy face into a frown. The headhunter throws the doll into the ropes and follows up with a vicious knee. She takes it down with a flying head scissors. I didn't think Mana knew any legal maneuvers. She stomps her in the stomach. And again. She has her up in a power and throws her into the ropes. show us your muscles. Yeah! And now she's choking her again. Mana is using the doll's own grip against her. The referee warns her to stop, but Mana's animal rage is overtaking her. She refuses to break. The referee calls for the bell. And Mana continues to choke the doll even after being disqualified. What an animal. Get her off, referee. Get her California dolls like the surf. Yeah, she's all wet. <laughs> if I eat all my desserts, can I still fit into my bathing suit? Only with a crowbar. Points to ponder. If someone trespassed on the farmer's daughter's farm. Would it go against her grain? <laughs> Do sexy bananas have appeal? <laughs> if skiers want quiet, do they shush on the slopes? <laughs> Hi gals, Tina Ferrari here with another tip on how to get the man you want. If you're both athletically inclined, why not plan a date to play tennis? You'll not only be working out together, but it'll be the perfect way to start a love match. So go on ladies, have a good time. Using the word fortify. Yeah, I bought a new coat for forty-five dollars. Oh, 
give them something. You're not at the opera, so anything goes. Come on down to ringside and you'll see some lows. My are nasty and mean, we're the sisters of the light. We like to be seen and we love the fight. We're nasty and mean, just show us to the mat. Just give us some sissy and we'll knock them flat. Take a break. We're gonna show you how we make a make. We grab them by the arms. We grab them by the thighs. We split them up. We throw them up. And laugh at their cries. We don't need love. And we don't need pity. We want you to like us so we can get your money. We eat raw meat before every bite. So get out the way, cause we kill our inside. We're nasty and mean, we're the sisters of the mic. We like to be seen and we love the fight. We're nasty and mean, just show us to the mat. Just give us some sissies and we'll not complain. We're nasty and mean, the sisters of the mic. We like to be seen and we love to fight. We're nasty and mean. Just show us to the mat. Just give us some sissies and we'll laugh and blast. We're nasty, we're nasty, we're nasty and mean. We're nasty, we're nasty, we're nasty and mean. We're nasty, we're nasty, we're nasty and mean. We're nasty, we're nasty. We're the sisters of the might. We like to be seen and we love to fight. We're nasty and mean. Just show us to the mat. Just give us some sissies and we'll knock them flat. We're nasty and mean. We're the sisters of the might. We like to be seen and we love to fight. We're nasty and mean. Just show us to the mat. And the Fijis are definitely going to have their hands full today. Hollywood and Fine waste no time in double teaming little Fiji before his sister is completely in the arena, let alone the ring. You can bet once Mountain Fiji finds out what's going on, she'll call an abrupt halt to these provocative procedures. And Fiji grabs the two of them and backdrops the street kids. Easily 
handling attache as well at the sound of the bell. Where other wrestlers throw their opponents into the ropes to set them up for punches or kicks, Mountain Fiji simply uses her raw bulk as a brick wall to smash the foul-mouthed mercenary against. While Mountain Fiji is attempting to tend to a sister, Hollywood and Vine ram the giant into the corner, squashing little Fiji. Now Attaché joins in, and the terrible trio is triple-teaming the big gal. The bad girls use Mountain Fiji as a pestle to crush her own sister against the mortar of the turnbuckle. They're all doing a number on Fiji, trying to make the mountain tumble. But no success. She slams Hollywood and Vine and catches Attaché. She is making the Marine join the Air Corps today. <laughs> Hollywood and Vine attack again. And Vine, what is she doing? She's ripping off Fiji Salon. They're trying to choke her with her own native garb. And now, look at this, they blinded her leaving the huge Samoan totally vulnerable to Attaché. Who is using a billy club to batter the blindfolded island behemoth. That Attaché personifies underhandedness. She loves to strike when you're unable to defend yourself. Fiji manages to throw off one clinging vine, and Hollywood bounces off it. Fiji comes out of nowhere with a drop kick. Little Fiji struggles desperately to free her sister. Trying to untie that knot in the ceremonial sarong. What is Vine doing here? Smashing the ceremonial tray over little Fiji's head. These street fighters will use any weapon, no matter how illicit or improvised. Sportsmanship is as alien to them as E.T. Vine jumps on Fiji, but is tossed off like a feather. Her partner throws little Fiji out of the ring, and Attaché goes to work with that sarong again. But the mountain is ready for her and flips the Marine over. The two street punks try to stretch out the big Samoan. But Fiji hip tosses Hollywood and gives Vine a dose of the same. Fiji is still feeling the effects of that beating from Attaché's club. trying to regain her equilibrium. While the evil trio tries to take advantage of it, bouncing off the ropes in an attempt to further disorient her and make her dizzy. She catches Vine with a tremendous backdrop and delivers the same to Attaché. Now she has Hollywood up for a big body slam, yes! Little Fiji leaps on her for the pin, but she can't seem to keep Hollywood down. Oh, her big sister lends her a helping foot and settles the matter once and for all. The winner of the match, Little Fiji and Mountain Fiji. Hello, Vladimir. You don't have to report today. It's your birthday. By the way, did you get the caviar I sent you? What do you mean it was no good? It tasted like fish? <laughs> Vladimir, if I had my way, you would be working on earthquake detection from underground. <laughs> I heard there was an eclipse of the sun yesterday. Yeah, Mountain Fiji bent over to tie her shoe. Great, great, great. 
patriot who bravely faced the hangman's noose and spoke for all Americans who have been called to serve in times of battle. With his stirring words, I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. Look out, Glow fans, here come the Heavy Metal Sisters. And those two patriotic pledges do little more than fire their fanatic frenzy. Chainsaw and Spike force an abrupt halt to the ceremonies, and look, Spike is torching the proclamation. How these two were released so quickly from the asylum after the potentially deadly antics of last week, I'll never know. The All-Americans charge into the ring and drop kick the Heavy Metal Sisters. Perhaps that might have knocked some sense into them, although I doubt it. And now Americana and Susie Spirit put themselves in the driver's seat, and I don't blame them. Chainsaw and Spike have earned their anger for ruining their tribute to our great patriots. are trying to flatten those two maniacs. And now, they're both trying to smash Spike. When she burned that parchment, she really lit a fire under the All-Americans. And now they kick Chainsaw out like the trash she is. Every time these two step in the squared circle, you see the proudest of Americans. This team works like a well-oiled machine. Both apply the pressure to Spike's legs. They pour it on, trying to make the creature submit. Look out. What's that back there? Chainsaw has got a rope. She's bound to put it to vile use against the All-American girls. The referee is so intent on the action, he doesn't see Chainsaw and she wraps it around Susie's spirit as if she were roping a bull. Using the rope for leverage, she pulls Susie back like the string of a fiddle. Now Spike follows suit and gets a rope around Americana's neck. Chainsaw slams the all-American girl to the mat. Metallic monsters are turning those ropes into nooses, and instead of a choice between liberty and death, are offering the All Americans nothing but death. The heavy metal sisters are using the ropes to flip their opponents around like a puppet on a chain, flinging them willy nilly about the ring in a potentially lethal fray. Referee warns Chainsaw and Spike that they continue to torture the American beauties. <laughs> Susie Spirit, in the corner, trying to slip out of the noose, succeeds, but no. Chainsaw has her again. Now they're stacking him up like cordwood. is Americana. Oh, and Spike delivers the same vicious boot to Susie's spirit. The heavy metal sisters are using those ropes to throw them completely out of the ring but they retain their grasp. Actually, Chainsaw and Spike should be hanging from those hemp leashes for their actions so far. Aunt Kitty distracts the referee while this macabre spectacle continues. Those evil sisters are holding tight to those ropes as if they were a lifeline, and indeed that they are choking the life out of the All-Americans. 
The girls are gasping for it, trying to get precious oxygen back into their lungs. Chainsaw hooks the rope over a beam. She's gonna hang him. She kicked the ref out of the ring, and now she's pulling back on those ropes with all her might. She's trying to lynch the All-Americans. Screaming for death. This is an appalling spectacle, ladies and gentlemen. Kicking the ref out of the ring again. Now there's no one there to stop this. And the painted parasite is now trying to play Tarzan at the cost of her opponent's neck. How much longer can they hold out? Spike mocking the All-Americans, taking their drum, costumes, and flag. Thank goodness for the best. But that doesn't stop Chainsaw. No, still yanking away as Spike plays a funeral dirge. She's gone totally wild. Security is trying to restore some order. It is about time. Heavy metal is going off the deep end. Take them away and sedate them. I'm beginning to think these security guards may be in danger of their lives. As berserk as these two are, look at those animals. Not contempt with attempted murder, they want to desecrate old glory as well. But the All-American girls retrieve their flag. No question about it, Chainsaw and Spike should be fined heavily for this display, maybe even banned. those show business producers out here. The only problem is some of them are mighty strange. One of them said that I was going to take the place of his star. Well, that sounded great until I found out he wanted me to sit on top of his Christmas tree. <laughs> Don't fret about me, none. The good Lord will protect me. Love, Amy. of Glow Magazine that you've been helping raising money for underprivileged children. Is that true? If it's in the Glow Magazine, it's got to be true. Wow. Wow. For the hottest moves in town, dial 1-900-660-GALS for Glow, those gorgeous ladies of wrestling. $1.50 the first minute, 35 cents each additional minute. Hey, Americana's proud of her singing. Oh, yeah? She sang the national anthem, and 200 mooses answered that girl's call. <laughs> I heard Chainsaw of the Heavy Metal Sisters flunked biology. How could that be? Simple. She probably tried to dissect the teacher. <laughs> Is there any honor you'd like to see bestowed on Americana? Yeah! A military funeral! Yeah! <laughs> Why does the headhunter shrink heads? She wants them to match her brain. <laughs> Mountain Siege, you will have a big future in medicine. Until they come up with a cure. <laughs> Matilda says she's broken a lot of records in her time. Yeah, and even more mirrors. <laughs> oh, Aunt Kitty, what do you want? David, do you know Hollywood not only is a great wrestler, but she's a fantastic acrobat. Good. Let her take a flying leap. <laughs> Get it. 